Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kyra Malfort and welcome back to another video. Mark my words. So as you guys can see from the title of this video, we are going to be doing a what's on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. This iPhone is one of the latest of the iPhone fleet. I believe this is their absolute latest one as far as I'm concerned. I actually bought this phone in the graphite color because I got tired of white, silver, platinum, whatever the color was. That was what my last iPhone was. My last iPhone was an iPhone 13. If you guys have been watching me for a while and you have read my description box, you know that I like to record with a Sony ZV-1 and my current iPhone. I did feel like my iPhone 13 Pro Max wasn't giving me the quality content that I wanted, especially when it came to editing and trying to match the quality. I do use both my camera and my iPhone interchangeably when I do my videos, especially when I go out in public. I don't like to carry my Sony ZV-1. One, out of fear that I feel like somebody's gonna take it from me. Two, I just don't like the unnecessary attention, so it is so much easier and more discreet to bring up my iPhone. All the brand new iPhones are made out of titanium, so this is, I guess, the natural titanium color, and it is gray. I just had to get this color because both of my MacBooks are silver and space gray, and I just feel like this is a cute little in-between, and it also matches my iPad as well. Don't mind my little protector for my camera. It's a little dirty, but that's fine. But this is what the phone looks like. It's super sleek, really cute. Still, they're somewhat thin design, and the only thing that they have replaced on here that I think is like virtually different is this action button. I believe they placed the power button a little bit lower. Honestly, the action button and the placement of the power button are my only two complaints about my iPhone. I honestly have not gotten used to the idea of the action button considering that you can reprogram it for multiple functionalities. I can go in into my settings and I can show you that later. Yeah, this is my iPhone and this is the case that I am currently using. This case is from Amazon. It is just a really cute gold melted case. I will show you guys the other cases that I have for my phone. I also have this really cute olive green one. This is also from Amazon. This is from Urban Sophistication and this is their puffer case. It is really, really cute. As a New Yorker, having a puffer for your phone is just like, cause you know, I'm extra. Now that we have all the tech specs, cases, accessories, and whatnot out of the way, let's get into the actual content of my iPhone. I'm just gonna move over here so that we can put my phone right here. Okay, so getting right into it, this is my lock screen. I created this myself on Canva. It's basically full of pictures that serve my mood for 2024. I do have one of my favorite Bible quotes on there and in the little upper left-hand corner, I use the app I am to leave positive affirmations on my lock screen and then over on the right is basically the charger levels of all my devices. So if say if I had my Apple watch on or my AirPods, it'll show me their battery life at the corner of my screen. So when you open my iPhone up, this is the first thing you're gonna see. This is my homepage, so let's just go through it. So obviously we have mail, nor the amount of emails that I have. I do have multiple email accounts for several purposes. So that is why there is so many different emails. My FaceTime app, calendar, maps, weather, photos, camera, the app store, my clock, find my contacts, notes. And if y'all know, you know, but for the girlies, the notes app is so personal. I could just never go in there. I do have my reminders app. And then I do have this app called First Place. And this is, I believe, Jordan Woods workout app, but I do have an account on this. I do believe I bought one of her workout plans. Like I'm telling you, like it was really good. Like this is like one of those first celebrity gimmick things that I was like, hmm, let me give it a try. And I'm not even gonna lie. There's some really good workouts on here. So I really do like that app. And then of course I have the Holy Bible as one of the first things on my home screen. And then I have settings. Jumping into my settings, as you can see, speaking of the action button, this is what it looks like. It's on the side, basically reprogram it to do anything. So there's silent mode, there is focus, so you can turn your DND automatically. Open the camera app, your flashlight, voice memo, magnifier. You can add a shortcut, and then I believe there are like two more thingies that you can use for accessibilities, and you can set it to have zero action whatsoever. 
But right now I just have mine set to silent mode. Over here I have this folder called utilities and this is basically where I have my measuring app, magnifier, calculator, wallet, Toyota for my car, my Nest app, which basically controls the temperature of my house, my Apple Watch app, and then I have Widget Smith. I am, which gives me the positive affirmations to my phone. Telegram, this is where I buy stuff. Basically, it's Telegram is basically another Facebook marketplace for me. And I have Duo, which helps me sign into my accounts. There's this app right here, but I have no idea why it's unmarked. Basically, that app is how I create some of my other widgets, which you guys are gonna see later. So sliding over to my next page, this is basically my main social media page. The page I use the most every day. So this is where we have my Instagram, TikTok. And like I said, if you guys wanna follow me, my TikTok is at Sincerely Kyra. And if you guys wanna follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is Kyra Melfort which is basically my full name. Up next, I do have Snapchat, but my Snapchat is honestly something personal. Honestly, I don't use anymore. The one person that I'm snapping is my boyfriend. We have over a 300 day streak, which is something we've kept up ever since we started dating. So I don't really use the app to contact anyone else, nor do I post on it. It's just to keep up with my boyfriend on day to day. Um, I do have X. X is just something also very personal to me. I am not releasing that out there into the world, especially if I want to get a job we're not gonna put my ex out there. Um, obviously, as you guys can see, my phone is very aesthetically themed. Um, skincare stuff I think is girly and cute, neutrals and whatnot. I just realized I didn't show you guys my home screen, but my home screen is just this really cute chair and roses. So cute, so minimalistic, just 10 out of 10 crisp. And I can probably link the photo for you guys somewhere in my description. I did get it off Pinterest. So anyways, back to my social media screen. After X, we have this transparent widget underneath that basically tells me my battery life, my weather, the date. I do believe there's different sections to it too. So let's tap. Um, the second page just tells me, you know, it's my iPhone, what update I'm running, my battery life, my memory, storage. There's a little weather tab and then a reminders tab. I don't really use this widget much. It's really just there for aesthetics. So my bottom apps are my YouTube Studio, YouTube, Pinterest. Basically YouTube Studio is how YouTubers like myself upload our videos, manage how they're doing, I guess who's watching them, how we garner who our audiences, X, Y, and Z. YouTube obviously because I like to watch my own videos sometimes and how I discover other content creators. I also do use Pinterest to gain a lot of inspiration for the things that I do. Aesthetics, outfits, hair inspo, nail inspo. I even use it sometimes to guide my faith and find ideas on, you know, just growing in my relationship with Christ. There's just a lot I do in this app. Like, who doesn't love Pinterest? If y'all like me, y'all are doing that rebrand at three in the morning on Pinterest anyway. So in my editing tools folder, I do use CapCut, which is one of the budget friendly ways that I use to edit my TikToks and my YouTube video. I have Canva, which is where I edit all of my thumbnails or any artistic sort of aspect that I need. I can also use Canva. I do also use that to put text inside my videos, which I'm more than happy to show you guys if you guys ever need it. I do have follow meter because I'm petty and I need to know who follow or unfollow me because if there's one thing you're not gonna do is you're not gonna unfollow me and not take me off as a follower and just leave me there like I'm your fan. Like, no, we do not do that here. I'm going to unfollow you back. Get the fuck out of here. And then the last tool I have in here is Airbrush, which basically is an app that allows me to take things out of the background. So let's say if I wanted to snap a picture right here and I want to get rid of these three frames in the back, I can use the Airbrush app to completely erase these from my background. On my next page, this is the page that I use for school. So I have my Outlook, LinkedIn, Quizlet, Canvas Student, where I see all my classes. I have my Files app, which basically connects my computers, like documents and X, Y, and Z and things if I need to submit it like from my phone, I can do that. I have Genius Scan, which is basically a PDF scanner, which means I can take pictures of any textbook or anything in front of me. I basically create a PDF to send to myself and basically have a digital version of the document. I have the Get app, which is something I use for food and printing so I can upload funds to it and I can either print stuff or I can get food from the cafe. Voice memos, if I say want to record something I learned in class. By the way, that is something schools do not like. So unless your professor gives you explicit permission to record them, don't do that. Um, Quimby, 
Quimby is basically an app or a website that gives you case briefs on whatever case that you're reading in your class. Yeah. Quimby, really love that if you're a law student. My notion, this is my notion. I have not organized it as well as I should do. And it's not gonna load up right now. It takes forever to load on your phone, but this is where I basically keep track of all my assignments. And then we have Microsoft Teams in case I have a meeting. And then Duolingo because your girl is trying to learn French this year. Anyway, sliding on over to my next page, this is some of the editing apps that I use. The first is Visco, which is basically, Visco is basically a photo editing app. You have a studio and you can basically edit all of your pictures in here with whatever filter that you like. Um, Tezza is another good one. That one I use mainly for Instagram stories. FaceApp is like some type of a, it's like an, it's one of those AI photo editing apps. I personally like to use this to like edit out pimples, crap like that, because it's really, it's really good for it. Mainly, I use that app when I don't want to use Facetune because Facetune, in order to use it in certain features, you have to pay for it. Whereas Face app, it's free. And then we have Unum, and apparently Unum doesn't want to load right now. But Unum is basically where I plan out my Instagram content. Obviously, if you go on my Instagram right now, there's only five pictures up, but that's because I deleted a majority of my page. I used to have over a hundred photos, but obviously new me, new era, and I'm no longer aligned with the girl in any of those photos. But this is basically where I would plan out my IG grid, um, Google Photos, where I keep all of my older photos, blah, blah, blah. Lightroom, iMovie. Well, iMovie is what I mainly use apart from CapCut to edit my videos. On my next page is my financial stuff. So I have Chase, Discover, PayPal, Bank of America, Cash App, Affirm, Klarna, and TD Bank. Going over to the next page, this is my health, wellness, shopping page. But Instacart is where I get all my groceries when I'm feeling lazy, which is basically all the time. The Target app, because who would I be if I didn't have the Target app? Like I scan in-store prices and everything. I never need a worker. Target app is gonna do it for me every single time. Like W Target. Uber Eats in case I'm ever hungry, but I mainly use this right now to get purchases from CVS because I am lazy even though CVS is literally five minutes from my house. Plant Nanny, which basically is a water tracker and it tracks my water intake. Amazon obviously for miscellaneous purchases because who mainly gets one thing from Amazon. My Bath and Body Works app, which is basically where I keep all my coupons, track my purchases and my points for free items. You guys know when I first started this channel, I was super obsessed with Bath and Body Works. No longer obsessed with them anymore. Like the scents, the candles, sprays, everything is just so mid and I honestly hate it. After that app, we have my health app, which is basically where I track my steps, blah, blah, blah. And then I have StockX where I buy sneakers, accessories, X, Y, and Z that I can no longer find in stores or on the original seller's websites. I mainly use this for my boyfriend to buy him gifts. I barely buy anything for myself on that app. Um, and then I have Weight Watchers. Honestly, it was something that I wanted to start, but never did. So it's just there. And we have the fitness app and then Sephora, obviously, because or where do you think all this glam is coming from? And we have DoorDash when Uber Eats is being crazy with the delivery fees. My second to last page is basically my TV and entertainment page. So this is Spotify, Max, Hulu, Crunchyroll. If you guys are anime fans, so am I. So if y'all wanna put me on your favorite anime, let me know because I am basically in a show hole right now. And I have been watching so much American TV. Speaking of which, Abbott Elementary is back and it is one of my favorite American TV shows. If y'all are watchers, let me know what y'all thought about that first episode. We do have my Google TV, which is basically how I control my TV from my bed, uh, SoundCloud, and then we have episode. And I am actually in the middle of reading a story right now. I do believe, what is this called? I'm currently reading the story Played Dirty by the author Yeev. I'm gonna assume it's pronounced Yeev, but 10 out of 10, great story, love the storyline. And then Wordscapes is one of my favorite apps in the world. Last but not least is my travel page. And of course, the king of all kings is going to be the very first of apps. And that is JetBlue. I am a JetBlue girly to the day I die. If you're a Haitian and you're, or you're a Caribbean person, you know JetBlue is just that girl for your flight. I love JetBlue, JetBlue has never done me wrong. And of course I'm a Mosaic member. And then we have Southwest because obviously two free bags, who doesn't want to fly Southwest sometimes? 
And then we have clear because I personally hate going through TSA and waiting on the TSA line behind people and people's kids. I can't do it. And after clear, I have Lyft, which is basically a cheaper version of Uber. But honestly, I feel like I get the worst rides on Lyft, so I always end up using Uber anyways. Under that, I have the weather app, which lets me know what it's gonna be like when I'm traveling that day. And then I have Fly Delta, American, which are basically my backup airlines when JetBlue and Southwest don't wanna act right. And then Uber and Expedia to track my travel prices. I'm pretty sure I didn't mention the bottom apps, but I have messages, music, phone, and Safari. Whew, that was a lot of talking. Anyways, that takes us to the end of today's video. I hope you guys liked it and maybe found some apps and things that you wanted to check out, use, or can enhance your content with or want to try lifestyle wise. If you guys like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys want to see more of. But anyways, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.